Lone Wolf. You've probably come across this term many times after a terror attack by a white male. But this term deceptively conceals a breeding ground of white supremacists. Now to paint you a picture, in 2019, 50 people were killed in two mosques in New Zealand during worship. In 2018, 11 people killed at a synagogue in Pittsburgh in the US. In 2017, one person killed in an attack in Queensbury Park Mosque in the UK. And in 2011, 77 people killed in Norway. And the list goes on. These attacks are in different parts of the world, but they have one thing in common. The perpetrators were the so-called white supremacists, and many cite previous attacks or attackers as their motivation. But who are white supremacists? Joining me is anthropologist Sophie York James, whose work specializes on white nationalist movement. Welcome very much, Sophie. Thank you for having me. Now, let's start with what is white supremacy? My focus is on the U.S., but the history of white supremacy in the United States has now fueled a global movement. Uh, in the United States, after every attempt to deinstitutionalize white supremacy, there has been an organized backlash to defend it. So the, at the close of the Civil War, with the abolition of slavery in the United States, the Ku Klux Klan is formed as a terrorist organization to attempt to reinstitute uh, white supremacy in politics. And then again, in the 1920s, the, the Klan emerges as an important political force in reestablishing white supremacy. What happens after the civil rights movement is suddenly no one, that, no people realize that no one is going to make any political progress around, on a platform of overt white supremacy. But where, where does it start from? Where do, what are the senti sentiments that drive them? There are several several sentiments, and unfortunately, uh, they're opposed to many different things. Uh, immigration, uh, like Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, uh, also uh, opposition to feminism and opposition to LGBT, LGBT rights, all kind of foster. Uh, they 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 are all come together in this conspiracy that white nationalists articulate, where they'll say. It's not just that feminism is changing gender norms. It's not just that immigration is changing demographics. They frame this as a global conspiracy against white men. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, an organization fighting hate, the number of hate groups operating across the U.S. rose to a record high of 1,020 in 2018. Now, another set of statistics from the Global Terrorism Index shows an increase in right-wing terror incidents in Europe and America. Let's quickly take a look at the numbers here presented. Now, from 2006 to 2008, there were about eight incidents. Between 2009 and 2011, there were 13. 2012 and 2014, there were 29. 2015 and to 2017, there were 108 incidents. Now, Sophie, how and where is this radicalization happening? So there's white supremacists have been on the internet since the internet emerged and they have traditionally uh, organized around uh, sites that were really dedicated to only people who hold those views what's happened with the exp expansion of social media is a lot of white nationalists with who already uh, uphold that ideology have migrated to spaces where young men uh, spend time can congregate online and try to infect those spaces with white nationalist ideology, and it's been very effective in spreading. So, for example, uh, the you know the most recent shooting in New Zealand spent a lot of time on 8chan and actually shared, uh, posted before the massacre that he was a, a link to the Facebook live stream that he was going to shoot, guaranteeing that he ha would have an audience. Um, a lot of other um, white nationalists also spend time on 4chan. Um, studies have shown that white nationalists on Twitter have uh, become, uh, like have grown exponentially in the last five years and have an incredibly strong presence. So really, unfortunately, it's many different areas of 
social media. But looking at social media wholesomely, there are also good parts in it. So what makes, uh, you know, I mean, we've seen very heartwarming stories from social media. So what makes it easy for people to follow the white supremacist ideology? Unfortunately, how social media functions is that we tend to spend time on sites and around people that uh, reaffirm our perspective. And so if you go to spend time in uh, the poll sections of 8chan or 4chan, which stands for politically incorrect, it's going to be a lot of young men uh, posting and reaffirming each other's perspectives and ideas. And it's really these sites where a lot of the so-called lone wolf uh, perpetrators of violence are seeing their audience. That's the audience that they're often wanting to engage because they know that they're going to be talked about and they know they're going to be celebrated. Now, I'd like us to watch a very short clip. And in this clip, the U.S. President Donald Trump downplayed that there's no rise in white supremacist. You see today white nationalism as a rising threat around the world. I don't really. I think it's a uh, small group of people that have very, very serious problems. I guess if you look at what happened in New Zealand, perhaps that's a case. I don't know enough about it yet. They're just learning about the person and the people involved. Uh, but it's a, certainly a terrible thing, terrible thing. What do you say to this, Sophie? Mm. Unfortunately, right that, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that perspective to dismiss this as a coordinated global movement is, one, to ignore the intelligence and to ignore uh, the facts, which show it is an increasing movement and that it's increasingly related to violence. So in the United States, there's evidence that since 9-11, uh, the far right has been far more violent than uh, Islamic extremists uh, in committing violence in the United States. And if we look at metrics on social media, it is a growing movement that does encourage violence. So denying this coordination, denying the threat is one, to ignore the facts, and it's two, to continue this misperception for, that may be affecting intelligence as well, that this, this, is an this is a crisis that needs to be addressed on multiple fronts, politically, in terms of uh, global intelligence, and in terms of um, community responses. And indeed, the hate group phenomena is not new. In 1865 is when the Ku Klux Klan, the American white supremacist hate group was founded. And since then, there have been waves of white extremist movements across Western countries everywhere. Germany, for example, had the Nazi party in the 1920s. It was outlawed after the World War II, but since then there has been a steady rise of right-wing extremist groups. And not just in Germany, but also in Austria, Poland, France, and many other countries. So what can history tell us about the future of white supremacists? Yeah. That is an important and very big question and I really think it comes down to you know what I was what I was just mentioning you know it comes down to uh, political a lot of it is about political will is what are who who is gonna stand up and defend multiracial democracies um, because really what these you know far right um, white supremacist movements are articulating is an authoritarian um, perspective that's inherently anti-democratic. And so really it's a question of for dem democracy. So people who are for democracy, who are against racism, need to be organizing and strategizing, strategizing at all levels of politics to counteract these movements. I also think it's a problem for, um, the, for social media companies, uh, for servers, for advertisers who have sometimes been connected to these uh, very extremist sites. How are we going to make sure that we corral hate speech so that we're, it's not no longer inspiring so much violence? And that has to be an international coordinated effort, both by governments, but also by tech companies and tech leaders. Thank you so much for your time, Sophie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank so you so much. much. Okay. Now, to get more videos like this, click on the subscription button and remember to leave your comment down below. Until next time, goodbye.